This podcast is brought to you by KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. This episode is also made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan, joined, of course, by Kyle Connor. And we just recently finished some towing. Well, we're not finished. We're still towing just all week, every week. There's a lot of stuff happening with trucks over here at Out of Spec. But we did just finish an interesting challenge, sort of a race, to put it lightly, um, putting four trucks towing equivalent loads over the Rocky Mountains and back. So we towed over the Rocky Mountains twice. And we had four teams, well, really just one person teams, but four trucks, each po- each towing a U-Haul trailer loaded up with a Model 3. And we even ballasted the weights of the Model 3s to all be identical. So putting each truck in its own identical category. And the results were interesting, but also not that surprising, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think so. So the trucks that we used were the uh, Tesla Cybertruck Cyber Beast, the rivian r1t quad motor large pack the f-150 f-150 lightning extended range lariat and the silverado ev4 wt now in the case of the cyber truck the dual motor at least on paper should do a bit better than the tri-motor um but i actually am not sure in the real world that actually works out to be true because they have one primary motor, one uh, permanent magnet, primary motor, primary axle power. And then the secondary drive is a dual induction system that's just along for the ride in both versions. So in theory, they should be very similar. And the Rivian had the large pack instead of the max pack, but that doesn't make that much of a difference. The dual motor drivetrain, though, does. And that would have been more efficient, uh, I think, than towing with the quad motor. We also we used my Rivian for this. I had a bed rack on the back. We should have pulled it off. It didn't really matter. But ultimately, the results were not a surprise at all, except for time in, in the Cybertruck. So before we get into the video, what I really want to, to let everyone know is there is... This is supplemental content for our full main towing over the Rockies video that just went up on out of spec reviews. It's over two hours long and we did not intend for this video to be over two hours long. So we thought we'd shoot a a summary video here on the podcast. But if you don't want any spoilers, watch that video and then come back and watch this podcast. Yes. So, um, the, the, the cyber beast I think should have done decently well, but this route we've used this route, part of this route for, for our race to Vegas, of course. And it's an interesting route because not all charging stations are V3 Tesla superchargers. Um, and I guess to set the scene, all of the trucks could use Tesla superchargers except for yours, the, the Silverado. So Kyle was piloting the Silverado EV and that thing is such a huge battery, something like 215 kilowatt hours usable. So, he thought it'd be interesting if he could stretch it all the way to Grand Junction. So to, to route, we we did Golden to Grand Junction, which is the I-70 corridor through all the mountains in Colorado. And he did do that, in fact. And that was almost like you, you had the least amount of content shot for the most part. It was just you're like, yep, I'm just over here cruising. Well, I can already feel the people being like, why didn't Kyle take the cyber truck? Because I would have known the 120 kilowatt stations, unlike time. And we'll, we'll walk through exactly what happened. But I have towed with cyber truck. I have towed with Rivian a ton. I've towed with lightning now a ton. And I really wanted to experience the Silverado because now the Silverado EV presents the first major step change in electric vehicle towing. This is now we've entered a new category compared to everything else on the market, whether it's SUV or pickup truck. And that is because it has twice the battery of everything else for the most part. I mean, it's huge. So when you're towing, your range gets cut, we always say in half, but it depends on the arrow and the weight and the drag of the trailer. But ultimately, the Silverado is the most exciting tow vehicle, which is why I took it. I really wanted to experience that because... I tow a lot with electric, so I selfishly took that one, not to win, but to really see what that truck was all about. And now I have a really good picture of towing with all of the electric trucks that I can talk about in the future. So 
uh, Jordan, we're four minutes into this thing. Why don't you walk us through exactly what happened, where we left, where we charged, what the stats were, all the good stuff. Yep. So we started in Golden, well, actually in Lakewood um, at the Supercharger slash EA. There's both Superchargers and Electrify America sharing a parking lot. It's a great starting spot for these kind of towing over the mountains or even just any any over the mountain stuff. It's a great starting spot right before you enter the mountains. So we all charged to 100 percent. And that way we left with the same exact optimal capacity that we could at least with our trucks because like kyle said our batteries were all a little bit different his was huge at least 50 percent or more than the other trucks but the other trucks you know the lightning has about 130 kilowatt hours rivian about 140 Cybertruck about 125 give or take so they're all a bit smaller down there and that has an effect on range um speed of course has a huge effect on range exponentially so in some in some cases because we all had the same trailer the same car on the back of the trailer we didn't just match weights we matched aerodynamics with the trailer because we all pulled a model three so it was really down to the truck itself um so we all left and start off the same same route same even speeds but then it was up to the driver to optimize and of course if you go slower you might be able to stretch it a bit further in some cases maybe some of us should have but it was interesting to see what each of our strategies were you know of course which chargers we decided to go to in timon's case it wasn't great with his first charger he thought he was stretching it which is i think a good idea he's like oh i can go a little bit further instead of stopping early because the cybertruck loves to charge deep down the pack same with the rivian with the lightning though i was like well i'll just pick whatever so honestly i could have optimized a little bit better you know i, I picked glenwood springs um which is notably a decent ways off the highway for let america so that's where me and andreas both went andreas had the rivian i had the F- so how many miles in because when we were leaving everyone in all three of your trucks, you were all thinking Edwards, which is 100 miles into the mountains yep. from the start. And that is 100 miles of elevation gain. There is some loss, of course, but it is uphill. And yep. that's uh, that's no joke when we're towing big loads. Keep in mind, these trailers were 6,500 pounds plus or minus and pretty aerodynamic because we're towing a car. But if you're towing a travel trailer or an RV, which I really tried to get RVs for this, but we just couldn't find anyone that had four identical ones for us to borrow for this. But we re- really tried. And so we settled on the Model 3s. 100 miles towing a big boy 10,000 pound brick. That's pretty crazy for most of these trucks, but towing a model three on a U-Haul trailer, no big deal. So everyone thought Edwards that you came up to the top of the Eisenhower tunnel. We all were burning a lot of juice well under one mile per kilowatt hour in each truck, well over a thousand watt hour per mile. And then, you know, we were regening down and I think everyone was like, Oh dang, we can actually go farther than Edwards. Let's go to the next major hub, which is Glenwood Springs deeper into the mountains. And that's where there's a supercharger and EA. The EA is great because it's the newer upgraded 350 kilowatt units, but the supercharger is an old V2 120 kilowatt station. And I don't think Timon knew that when he was navigating there. He didn't look. What was your impression, Jordan? That is my impression. Um, He was just basically trying to match me and Andreas because we were all kind of also, you know, talking during this whole time, kind of seeing where each other were at and stuff. And so it looked like I found out my efficiency was about the exact same as theirs, if not a tiny bit better, which was interesting. And so basically I was like, actually, sorry to interrupt you, but that brings up a point. Every time I tow with the lightning, it is slightly more efficient towing than the Rivian, and I think than the Cybertruck. And I think it's because it's a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit less efficient without a trailer, but it pushes yeah. more air out of the way for the trailer. Uh, I and I think that's the key when towing. Yeah, I think that's the case because the the Cybertruck and Rivian are both more slippery, and so the slipstream behind them is just catching more of that uh, Model 3 in the trailer. So I was like, wow, I can go further than I thought. Um, although, like we've learned with the Lightning, I maybe should have stopped at Edwards and just pulled right off the highway instead of going, you know, five minutes plus into Glenwood Springs. Um, that might have been an advantage for me because the Lightning just doesn't really charge that fast low into the pack. It's a pretty pretty flat across the board. You get that boost um, at any time, really, before 80%. And so it would have been fine for me. And I went, I ended up going to Glenwood Springs about 146 miles from the start. So that's a pretty good stretch uh, with towing. And I still had 20% when I arrived. Andreas arrived shortly after me with 10%. He was slowing down a bit because he got a little nervous with the state of charge on arrival. Really? I actually, I haven't watched the full video yet. So Andreas had 10% less than the Rivian than you did in the Lightning. 
That's correct. Yep. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Um, why didn't you go to the supercharger, which would have been right off the highway in rifle? Um, I probably could have stretched it to rifle, but I, my truck, here's the other thing. My truck, the lightning was having some major issues understanding how far I could go on a charge. So even when I passed Edwards, it was saying, I can't, you can't go anywhere else. I had, I don't know, 35% when I was passing Edwards or something. And the truck thought I could go 25 miles on a charge. And it, that, that the state of charge on a, like the state of, or the, the miles remaining estimate was so all over the place, but it kept like super undercutting itself. And it was really confusing. And it also wouldn't navigate anywhere because it didn't think I could make it. So instead of giving you the option to remove chargers, just be like, okay, just tell me, you know, how to get there. It wouldn't even let me do that. It was saying you literally can't go anywhere. Well, so, just watching the beginning of the video, I saw you had issues with the Ford software, and maybe it's something we can piece together like a recommendations list on what Ford can improve uh, mm -hmm. with the software for their future versions, because this is the hardest task, not only for the trucks towing over the mountains, but also for the software to help guide the driver as to what to do, because you have thousands of feet of elevation changes, extreme weather conditions where it got really cold up at the top of the hills, warm at the bottom of the hills, and and totally, you know, just crazy terrain that sounds like the lightning couldn't really deal with that and monitor the, the effect of that trailer very well. Whereas the Cybertruck did a good job. The Rivian was doing a pretty good job. It always undercut what uh, Andreas was going to get in with, but then would build up a little bit. And I think that's good. It prevents people from running out. That that seemed really good. Um, the Silverado was needs tuning. It wasn't as bad as the Lightning, but it was like when I first put in Grand Junction, it said I would get there at 34%. That had been after towing with for over an hour down to the start point with the same trailer. And then it was like, oh, actually, I arrived at 14. But okay, so you stopped in Glenwood Springs. Andreas stopped in Glenwood Springs. You both had great charging sessions, it looked like. Um, a yeah. couple little maneuvering trailers. You probably should have unhitched, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Timon really blocked a lot of superchargers here. I just want to apologize and say, thankfully, Timon does not own a Tesla and will not block superchargers in the future because he didn't stop anyone from charging, but he was that dude who parked, you know, blocking five stalls. Um, but you stopped there. You had a good charging experience. What happened with time in Glenwood Springs? Yeah, so he actually, that was where he did unhitch. So he didn't block any chargers in Glenwood Springs, but they were the V2 superchargers. So maybe he should have. Maybe he should have blocked the ones that he would have been load sharing with. <laughs> because they're, they're just, yeah, they're V2s. And they're not even like the quote unquote good V2s. Like these are like 120 peak, not even 150. And the, for a truck with that size battery, that's pretty abysmal. So he, that was just a really bad stop for him. That really set the course for the rest of the race because he did make up some time sort of speak uh, later on but i think if i were timing i would have stretched it to rifle maybe even slowing down a bit and then charge up there or or even blast in in edwards a bit charge and then go to parachute charge i would have skipped all the v2s which includes skipping grand junction so we all had to go to grand junction and to keep it fair we all had to take a photo at the same starbucks um, so that you technically you didn't have to charge in Grand Junction. You could have maneuvered the the situations, which I probably would have done in the Cybertruck. But he did charge at Glenwood Springs um, on the really bad V2. Then he went to and Rifle. Not only was he charging there, he was he called me. He's like, I'm only getting 50 kilowatts. And I was like, what the heck? Move stalls, <laughs> Timon. What are you doing? He's like, oh, well, I didn't think about that. I'm like, come on, Timon has done multiple EV cannonballs with me. He's not new to EV. He may not like electric cars, and he's coming around to them as the years go on, but he like knows how to optimize them. And I was like, dude, you're sharing with someone. And I think what threw him off was typically on V2s, there's 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3 a 3b but on the yeah. very early installations which glenwood springs is it goes 1a 2a 3a and then 1b 2b 3b so you actually kind of do want to just park right next to someone uh, yeah. and that's to ensure that you're not sharing the 120 kilowatts split to 57 i think he was getting and i was yeah. like dude this is just not good and a lot of people good. a lot of people would just not even know to do that so I, I do hope tesla just rips that out and puts something new in maybe maybe v4s i mean maybe that'll be a leapfrog situation where they just skip v3 altogether and go straight to v4 well there's a v4 in frisco waiting to get uh permitted and installed it seems like i just nice. you know saw it on the frontage road so it's a it's a v3 and a half cabinet but a v4 dispenser yep 
So yeah, that he he should have skipped Glenwood, um, regardless of what he took. He he did hop down to rifle. He charged only as what he needed to get the rifle. Then he finally got good charging speeds. Um, then he went to Grand Junction and charged at V two there as well. So that was just yeah. He he was up against the. I mean, you should have known, but also the infrastructure along this route is not all super fast Tesla. And actually, it almost caught me and Andreas off guard. We were like, oh, we're gonna go. We're all gonna go to Glenwood and charge on Tesla. And then we were like, wait. We can't use every Tesla charger in this Rivian and this Lightning. So we checked the app and it was like, yep, that's not on the network. It's a V2. It's not even all V3s are available to us, but this was especially not. So you're right. We went to the EA, which was fantastic, flawless experience. We plugged in. It just worked. Both of us got max charging speeds. And we both were able to park with our trailers and not unhitch. And we weren't blocking traffic. It was a very unique we didn't even block any chargers either. We could have had four people charging here at the CA. So that was interesting. Um, the front charge port situation is the best if you're towing with our current infrastructure. That's what I was going to say. It all comes down to charge port location. Um, one of the things I was really thrilled about with the Silverado was that I knew I would have to unhook anywhere I went because uh, GM is not open to superchargers yet. It will happen soon, but not yet. Um, and, you know, I was like, Okay, I want to unhook the least amount of times. A, it's not fun. It takes time. It's a pain in the butt. Your hands get dirty. I just don't like doing it. So um, I was like, thankfully, I'm going to try and only stop once, unhook, do a deep charge, and come back. And if I had a front charging port, I may have done it a little bit differently in the Silverado. I may have stopped a few more times. And when it came under 300 kilowatts, I could have been even faster. But um, I was like, nope, I'm going to just do the big battery thing do big distance, charge fast, uh, and, and charge deep. And that front charging port is a huge advantage, especially the Rivian being right up front, a huge advantage for towing. Yeah, your point about the um, you know the advertisements used for some of these big vehicles sh always show them that one special charger that has like this perfect pull through situation there, and people are like, oh, that's probably what it's like. No, no, no that's that's maybe one percent or less of the case. So unhooking is not fun, but yeah, you had the big battery, you could do that. How long was your one charging stop? Uh, I have to look exactly. I think it was just under an hour. So I yeah. drove basically 500 miles towing with less than one hour of charging over the entire Rocky Mountain range in an electric car, which is pretty damn good, I think. Yeah, so, that's fantastic. I mean, not including, I guess, your your first charge, but that that's still... the Right, the, that was leaving full. The hours driven versus the hours charging, whereas the rest of us did have to stop, um, I guess, three times total. Well, time had to stop four times. Um, that was... Like like we said, his own doing, but that's that's why the the Cybertruck. I think the Cybertruck could have come in second if you and Timon had switched vehicles. That would have been definitely a different experience. Um, and what's interesting though is the Lightning possibly could have come second with our existing lineup because there's a couple moments where I probably could have optimized for the truck's weird charging situation better, um, but. That just didn't quite happen that way. And the Rivian, I think, could have done better, but it was on the you know studded tires and it had the, the rack and stuff. So I think the rack helped it. The, the rack might have helped it. It's, it's hard and, to say. And I think the studded tires don't make that much of a difference, which is why I was okay with it. Um, yeah. The Rivian came second place, ultimately. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, the running order was Silverado by a mile. I mean, I was home before you guys even got to the Charger to finish up. Uh, yeah. and then the Rivian, then the Lightning, then the Cybertruck. In Grand Junction, though, the halfway turnaround point, the strategies were interesting. So I blasted as fast as I can to the EA station to try and get the 350-kilowatt charger because according to the app, there was only one working 350-kilowatt charger. The other 350 was limited to 50 kilowatts, and the one other plug on my 350-kilowatt charger was uh, dead. It was showing as not available. And what I noticed was when I got there was there was an Ionic 5 looked like he was plugging in and I was like, oh, I might be done here. Like you guys might have a chance to catch up because I got to charge up this 200 plus kilowatt hour pack. If I don't have big charging speeds and you guys are hopping along at good speeds, you might actually catch up. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, that was not the case. So I charged for 58 minutes and 59 seconds, max charging speed of 350 kilowatts, a... 185 and a half kilowatt hour delivered charge. That was from 14% to 93%. <laughs> so I drove over the entire Rocky Mountain range while towing and still had 14% remaining. And That's I didn't drive crazy. slow. I just cruised out there. Uh, I charged to 93%. 
you know, and, and that at about 91, 92%, it dipped to 50 kilowatts, I think. And that's when yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get the heck out of here. But before that, I was doing 120, which is like what you charge at. So yeah. I was like, I'm still <laughs> ripping pretty good all the way up top. And then, so one hour got me another 250 miles plus or minus back to Denver, back to wherever we, the heck we started, Lakewood. So yeah. that works, I think. That was, I had the easiest time there. Yep. Yeah, and I fortunately pulled up and I was I was nervous because I was like, well, if there's not enough stations available, it's like, well, I have to unhook, well, I have to wait. I mean, that is a kind of a hub station in a way. A lot of people do stop there, even though it's also far off the highway. But fortunately, I pulled up and I was able to just pull right in, blocking a bunch of parking spots, but not charging spots. It's a huge parking lot, so I wasn't worried about blocking a few parking spaces. Um, but I was able to catch up to you, and I actually got my photo first. So I reached the halfway point in first place and then subsequently uh, did not get first. But And when you say photo, <laughs> is we were going to all take, the, take all a take snapshot. The yeah, the same photo in front of a Starbucks, of course. That's very on brand. But yeah, yeah I could have you gone and I on the way in, but I came in the back way, so I was like, I'll take the photo on the way out. Yeah, but yeah. Technically, you you beat me to the halfway point, <laughs> if that's you know what you call beating me. But you and I were the only ones going to that EA because Grand Junction now has Rivian um, charging network stations. So Andreas beeline to those. Um, got a quick charge because he was like, well, I'm going to go to parachute or rifle or something on the way out. So he didn't really stop for that long. I just very briefly saw him. Um, time and of course, went there, blocked a bunch of chargers. Uh, there was always charges available, so he never kept people from charging, but it was close. <laughs> I mean, I think time would have moved if someone was waiting. He yeah. wouldn't like make someone wait, but it just it's not a good look. <laughs> but also <laughs> rear charging port like Cybertruck should have a front port. Um, but yeah. also the Grand Junction superchargers again an old crappy v2 with 120 kilowatts and so he also plugged in and was getting 50 kilowatts and had to move and then another car plugged in on the b of his and had to and you know he was just battling this 50 kilowatt split charge this whole time and that's where it would have really made sense if time and hit parachute on the way in charged up enough to get to grand junction and back to parachute uh and parachute has the trailer stall which is nice you can yeah. nose in it's not a pull through but it's a nose in more for bike racks and stuff and that yeah. would have been the move Yep. So that's what we did after Grand Junction. He charged in Grand Junction and then still had to go to parachute. So well, that makes sense because he shouldn't have stayed yeah. any longer than needed on the slow charger. I think that's when something clicked in time and sprain. He's like, oh crap, I'm letting this thing down. L he got let's it. start rocking. Yeah, he got it figured out. So we kind of rocked the way back and really the the snowstorm. We, we hit a bit of a snowstorm. You were in front of us, fortunately. So you were able, able to kind of report on the weather uh, in real time. Because, you know, that's so spotty trying to catch a forecast in the mountains. I mean, one spot could be snowstorm. The other spot could be completely dry. But um, we, we still had... Uh, enough data for an accurate race because our last charging stop. Well, Edwards, what happened after parachute? Because I didn't hear what you guys charged to, and then we'll get oh, into the Edwards. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, me and Timon went to parachute. I thought Timon and Andreas and I all thought we were doing different things. So we were looking at parachute and rifle, all of us. And I saw Andreas leave Grand Junction first, and then he went past parachute, and I was like, oh, I'll go to parachute. Because it doesn't matter when I plug in, I'll get the same speeds. And I well, you'll I, get I, faster speeds the deeper you plug in. The thing with the lightning is you should always charge to 80%. Yeah. And then the higher state of charge you plug in, which you mentioned in the video, you'll get the same 450 amp boost, but at higher pack voltage. So you'll get even more charging. And so yep. the move with the lightning is to work the middle to the top of the pack, not yeah. the bottom of the pack, like the Rivian and the Cybertruck and the Silverado. So that's what I did. I went to parachute, um, got there a little bit before timing, plugged in, you know, super huge parking lot, super easy for, for towing situations. And he was able to secure that one charger you mentioned. So neither of us had to unhook. We both charge relatively deeply because my truck just wouldn't tell me how far I could go, couldn't un understand the elevation. So I was like, okay, I don't know exactly how it is from parachute to Edwards. Um, Andreas skipped parachute, went to rifle. Um, and had some traffic and actually he had some charging station issues. He had to switch Tesla superchargers three times, I think, because it kept giving a fault. The, you know, the Rivian charging port turned red after charging for a little bit. Really? Yeah. So it would work for a little bit and then it would fa fault itself. The no third way. try was a charm. He finally got full speeds. He was like, all right, I'm ripping. But that was a, that's what I was. <laughs> that's how I caught up to him. I charged at rifle or at parachute flawlessly. I left shortly after time and plugged in. 
blasted past Andreas, who was stuck in rifle. Um, and Tymon charged probably a little bit deeper than he needed to. So we all got to Edwards all sorted together. And Edwards is a site that's both Tesla and EA. It's a version yep. three that's open to everyone and an EA site. And it's the EA stations are extremely trailer friendly with a front charge port yep. because you can just nose right up. But again, the Silverado couldn't do that. So yep. <laughs> you just nose up and you don't block anyone. I love towing with my Rivian. I always stop at Edwards because it's a great stop. Before the climb, you avoid the Frisco nonsense, which is a pain in the ass all the time. That parking lot's just awful. Those chargers suck anyway. And so, um, yeah, so so you all got to Edwards, and I was ahead because I, again, only had to charge once. I won the whole thing by a lot, but yeah. um, big battery lifestyle. But I was in crazy weather. Yeah. So I called you guys, and I was like, don't drive on this. Yeah, and I think our our need to stop and Edwards in charge did cause us to wait out the storm a little bit because it was definitely worse for you than it was for us. Um, so I think you took the brunt of it and even tracking the weather radar. We, we were all like sitting there at Edwards plotting, like we were planning something and <laughs> it was checking different apps and things. And it did look like there was like a window where we would get, we still got a, a good amount of snow. It was still a little sketchy at times, but definitely less sketchy than I think what you experienced. So we basically realized Edwards was the last stop for everyone. So we could dictate the winner of the race basically by who's going to leave Edwards first. And Andreas would have left. He, he arrived maybe two minutes after I arrived and we, he has faster charging. So he would have left probably five minutes before me. So that dictated the, the lightning versus the Rivian time and arrived right as we would have been leaving. But because of the snow and stuff, we decided, okay, we already know the finishing order. We're all going to wait and ride it out together as a team just in case there's any issues. Um, so we, me and Andreas just deep charged. But it was funny. He, he has such faster charging speeds. And so he blew past me, but then hit his 70% while I was still cruising to 80. So me and Andreas both hit 80% at the exact same time, which was kind of funny. That's the thing. The Lightning charges faster to 80% than the Rivian, but the Rivian charges to 70% way faster than the Lightning charges to 70%. Yep. But he fell off a cliff, but he had to unplug anyways because time and rolled up, didn't want to unhook. And so he had to block basically all but two Tesla chargers to, to pull. He had to go in the wrong way on the parking lot. It's like a one-way parking lot situation. He's like, I have to go this way. Thankfully, um, it was the middle of the night. By the Middle time of the night. Time. No one was there. Well, not really. Timon got followed. A Model Y followed him because they wanted to see the Cybertruck so bad. It's like 11 p.m. And he, they saw him on the highway and followed him to this charger stop to see the Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah, so, that goes a little bit too far, I think. A little, a little scary. He had, I mean, you guys, you and Timon especially left at the same time, and you saw a lot of people just causing chaos on the highway trying to get photos and stuff of the Cybertruck. It is a bit it, of a... People's funny. behavior around that truck while driving is dangerous. It's uncomfortable. Uh, and I actually hide it at the office most of the time. So it's yeah. not in front of my house because it gets... It's just a no... It's like, yeah, great that people are excited, but some people just don't know there are boundaries. <laughs> yeah, it makes me think I would hate to be like a real celebrity because you can't even go to Walmart without you know being being bothered. So, But that's... I mean, that's the brunt of it. I think... We're not super surprised by the results given the circumstances. I mean, we know how the Cybertruck could have been optimized a bit better. Even the could Lightning the Cybertruck could have, been, have beat the the Rivian or the Lightning though. It, if if it weren't for those charging issues, time and had he would have beat us. Even okay. if he had unhooked, I think because of how much faster he charges. Um, right. So. It, but it, it shows that the infrastructure, Tesla's infrastructure, isn't perfect anywhere, and this is still a rough place for Tesla infrastructure. Yeah, and a lot of that does talk about the the public knowledge of everything because not everyone would have known to not charge at V2s like the normal person, especially towing. And then even in our case, like normal people are like, oh, you know, Lightning and Rivian has access to Tesla superchargers. Normal people driving those trucks may have gone to a V2 without realizing it. So it, it's not guaranteed anywhere. And the Rivian does a really good job of telling you which stations you can and can't get to. The mm -hmm. Lightning does not have that integrated into the map well. It had, yeah, it never knew. Like, there's no Tesla superchargers according to the Lightning. Um, right, and, there isn't a charging. There's like a, a a menu within a menu that gives you a list of nearby chargers, and that shows up Tesla superchargers, but they do not populate in your route planning or your nav. But yeah. like Rivian has it fully dialed to the point where it shows you the cost on the screen when you're charging. 
Yeah. So I don't know if there's if there are software issues specific to this lightning. Like I want to caveat that could be a possibility because I was rolling into the target parking lot in Glenwood and it said I could do 20 miles, which I know I could have gone further than that on 20%, but it was saying you can't reach your charger. And it then I went to the screen, found that there's a charger there. It knows it's a charger, tried to navigate to it, it said cannot compute. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean know. that uh, that software needs some improvement because some of the software for towing in the Lightning is great in terms of showing you temperature data, in terms of yep. showing you powertrain data. It's got the backup assist thing if you set all that up. It's like a lot of really good tech, but they just need to merge the towing tech with the EV tech, and then they'd yep. be set. Uh, yep. It just shows that, like, okay, maybe the next generation of Ford vehicles will take this Rivian Tesla fully integrated approach. I have to say the Silverado was good. It didn't give me much adjustability. It didn't give me many problems. I just wish the state of charge on arrival um, would have been more accurate, but it never was like, I can't figure this out or can't do it. It preconditioned on the way to the charger automatically. It did everything I needed it to do. And, it, and it's basically the same system in um, in Max's Polestar. It's like the Google thing and it works well it works really yeah. well yeah so we we all had a good time i mean uh andreas did hit a little bit of region limitation issues i don't think time actually did um and you and i i don't think had any region warnings which is weird because you just hit regen limit in the cyber truck yesterday not even telling <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure time and no knew what to look for it, it is subtle the little message above the thing so he, yeah he and may have... the dots that come up he may not have re i bet he was in regen limit in the cyber truck based <laughs> on everything we've done with it and the yeah. fact that you hit regen limit without a trailer at low state of charge yesterday on a yep. less aggressive downhill yeah so it's it's possible but i don't know the the, the lightning is a beast for sure it just I, I want the software to be fixed software is just such a big deal to me and so i was very comfortable love the truck but the software is a deal breaker. Did you in use the uh, lane centering at all? Um, it wouldn't really do it very well. Like, oh, it, really? You know, the, no blue crews, and then even lane centering, it wouldn't really fully understand. So I just manually drove the whole time. Okay, because um, it does allow... Uh, that is the only truck here that allows lane centering with a trailer. It's not yeah. hands-free. It's hands-on lane centering. Um, yeah. And I've used it before, and I agree. It gets a little bit of motions going and stuff like that. On, if I was hauling through Kansas, I probably would have done it. But this is, you know, the most treacherous part of interstate in the country, which is why we use it for a lot of tests, you know, our hogback challenges and such like that. So I, I just decided to drive myself and especially because there was some traffic. We never really had to slow down with crazy traffic, but it was normal mountain weekend traffic for sure. Well, one thing we've learned is the Silverado EV is a freaking beast with the big yep. battery. And if you have to tow and you want to tow with electric, just get one of those. It's yep, as amazing. Soon as it's, I'm out for the public. That's I'm curious how well they'll sell because right now it's a fleet vehicle, basically, right? Which is why no one knows about it because they haven't started like the advertising or the reviews like this. Like they don't even have review trucks. Like we had to like beg GM to send us this thing because I was yeah. like, you know, I understand it's a work truck, but we need to show the big battery. Um, and basically, it's like that's just gonna kill everything when the consumer one comes up on on terms of towing in terms of this specific use case for a truck this is so far ahead of anything else I just hope they come up with a tow package with a front charge port um, I know they won't but I really hope they do because that would make it so much more livable yep exactly so I don't know it's a fun interesting challenge and um the results were interesting. I think the last three trucks were close. I mean, even if everything was optimized, like we all thought of things we could have done better. So, and we still arrived. We were all at the same chargers about the same time, just leaving them such a little bit um, close. So I don't know if it would make a huge difference. It's almost like, what truck do you like more? <laughs> Pick that one. So, unless you want the big battery, of course. So, yeah. Anything else to add or is that our, that's our summary? No, I'm just like Silverado's a freaking beast. That's what I learned from this whole thing. <laughs> it's fast charging, big range, big battery, very heavy. You can't even feel the trailer behind it. Thing rocks. Yep. So as we said in the beginning, go check out our full length video. It's like a feature film over on YouTube on out of spec reviews. That's where every single detail, all the drama, all the fun, it's all laid out there. And um, thanks for enjoying our quick summary. Quick ish. <laughs> it's never super quick here at Out of Spec, but um, go check out that film if you want to see everything happen in real time. And um, we'll see you guys in another episode of the Out of Spec podcast very soon. Cheers.